Did you know if you look at the printout, whether an amphibian or octopus at this area, you have two values the mean deviation and the pattern standard deviation in the Humphrey or the mean deviation and loss variance in octopus. These two values can give you exactly what's going on. If there is normal field or there is a generalized depression or there is a localized changes in the field or there are both localized and generalized changes in the field. To understand this, let's go to the mean and standard deviation. First, let's start what's meant by the mean. If you get a group of values like this, if you want to have an average or mean, we're going to add these values and divide them by the number of the values. So the mean or x bar equal the summation of the values divided by the total number of the values. Here in the printout, these are the deviation from the normal and the mean deviation is shown up here. Again, the same in the octopus and the mean deviation is shown up here. Suppose we have a group of persons, then we get another group and we want to know the second, the green group, how much this second group is deviated from the original group. To know this, we need to check the difference between each person. Then to get one value, we're going to calculate the mean for these differences. This is known as the mean deviation. This is the same what happens in the field of vision. This is the normal hill of vision. This is our patient. Each point is tested and is compared with the normal value and the differences are recorded. Then the mean for these differences is calculated. The mean deviation can show slightly depressed field or more depressed or severely depressed field. So the mean deviation gives us indication to the height of the field, the general height of the field. And we are accustomed to say if the value is below 6, we say there is mild depression of the field between 6 and 12. It's moderate depression of the field. More than 12, it's severe depression of the field. Now, what about the variance and the standard deviation? Suppose we have a group of five persons, and this is the height of the five persons. Another group, but we get one person taller, one person shorter than the first. A third group, one pole, first and the last, more different than the first group. If we calculate the mean for the three, it's almost the same. But how far the the rest of the group from the mean. In the upper example, they are close to the mean. In the last example, they are widely distributed away from the mean. Let's have this group and follow it. So these are the values and this is the mean. So this person is shorter than the mean by 10 centimeters and this person shorter by 5 centimeters. Third one did the same. Fourth one longer, taller by 5 centimeters. Last one taller by 10 centimeters. So the whole group, how much they are deviated? If you add these values, you will get a zero because some are minus, some are plus. They will cancel each other. Always the mean is in the middle. So to get rid of the minus sign, they start to think of squaring numbers. So whenever you multiply the minus by itself, it will be a plus. So we multiply everything by itself. Now we have all pluses, we can add them and we get a value. So we will say that the whole group deviated from the mean by some value, 250.
But uh, what about if the number of uh, in the group was not 5 or 7 or 10 or 20? So they decided to divide this value by the number of the data in the group. So in our example, we divided by 5. Then the second step, they say, as long as we start by squaring numbers, then let's get the root, the square root of this value. So here, this is known as the variance, and this is known as the square root. So as you can see, variance and square root are two things for the same thing, when it's the square root of the second. As you notice here, in the first group, the standard deviation is 7, and the second group, it is 11, and the last group is 25. So as you see, as the group gets widespread compared to the mean, then the value of the standard deviation will be higher and higher. So graphically, if the standard deviation is small, this means that the values are around close to the mean. If the standard deviation is high, then the values are away from the mean. This is the same what happens with the field of vision. The tested point, the 45 or 76 points are gathered, the mean is calculated, then each point we see the difference of that location from the mean. Some minus, some plus, net result will be zero, then we square, then we divide by the total number, this is the variance. If we get the square root of this value, this is the standard deviation. And this is what's shown here. In case of Humphrey, it is called pattern standard deviation. In case of octopus, it's called loss variance. If I look to this mean deviation, standard deviation, or mean deviation loss variance, I can get the information about what's going on. If the standard deviation or the loss variance are high, then we mean some of the points are away from the rest of the group. If even one single point is much depressed, then the standard deviation will be very large. So if all the points are similar to one another, so we get small standard deviation. If some of the points are more depressed, we have a larger standard deviation. If some points are more and more depressed, it will be a huge standard deviation. Now, the mean deviation gives us information about the height, and the standard deviation or the loss variance gives us information about the shape of the field. So in this example, all the points are almost close to the normal, so the mean deviation is normal, and all are very clearly similar to one another, no, no particular area markedly depressed, then the standard deviation or the variance is normal. So most probably you are dealing with a normal or minimally disturbed field. In this example, all the points are depressed uni universally, equally. So the mean deviation is affected, while the standard deviation or the variance are normal. So this means that we are dealing with a pure generalized depression of the field. In the third example, only one location is affected. This will disturb the standard deviation, but it has no effect on the mean of this huge 40 54 points or 6, 76 points. So we get a normal mean deviation and affected standard deviation. This means a pure localized changes. In this last example, all points are affected and some of the points are more depressed than the other. Then both the mean and the standard deviation are abnormal. So simply by looking at these two values, we get the mental impression in our mind, is it a generalized depression, is it a localized depression, is it both generalized and localized depression. For example here, mean deviation slightly affected, loss variance almost normal, the square root of this number will be around 
one point something. So we have mild affection, but no localized changes. In this example, moderate affection of the sensitivity, square root of this is high. So here we get a localized changes. In this printout, you can see here mean deviation, and it's written here SLV. It is the square root of loss variance. Square root of rope of loss variance means standard deviation. So we have here generalized depression and also localized changes. Again in the octopus, marked generalized depression and also localized changes. Minimal changes in the general state with some local changes. So just looking these two numbers, we get the mental impression what's going on. Thank you.